Hey, we're live, pal. Second Again. second show of the day for Andrew and I. Maybe there's a third one. Mm, I think that I don't guy, think I think that, the, I think I think that, that one got kiboshed. Yeah, that one got kiboshed. <laughs> so for this one, we have uh, Will Washington from from Grapsity. Uh, we're going to talk about, of course, what everyone's talking about, the MJF situation. Uh, we're also going to talk about some of the other stuff going on in wrestling. Double or nothing is this weekend. I'm very interested to see or to hear, you know, what you guys are looking forward to the most on that show. And maybe that changes based on the information we have today. Uh, we may get into Mariah Carey. No, we'll probably won't get into Mariah Carey. Because we, we could, because with we Will, <laughs> we could do an entire show on Mariah Carey. Uh, I have talked to Will before a lot about Mariah Carey, but probably we'll have to save that show for a different day. But anyways, Will, welcome. Thanks for jumping Thank on. Thank you for having me. How has your Vegas weekend been so far? Hot. <laughs> insanely hot. I, uh, Other than that, it's been great. Uh, it just, uh, I've been so busy. I've been all around. And the hard thing is I've been in and out of Vegas because I flew in Wednesday, flew out Thursday, then flew back. Because your so. your daughter had a graduation. Yeah, she, ah, congratulations! Got it, got so it. Uh, she just finished elementary school, and I wasn't gonna miss that. Amazing. So uh, I flew back, and then I, I'm back here, and it's been really, really crazy. Uh, this MJF story is insane, and I feel like as we're doing this, more information is gonna it's, keep coming out. Don't worry, uh, I, I'm I'm checking my some, phone. Some came out constantly. Already. So JJ uh, filled us in with a little information that his flight is going to Newark. Apparently, interesting. Uh, That's so the this, rumor. So right. this flight that was has been uh, scheduled to fly out of Las Vegas is. It, are we sure? Is it in his name? Is it in like? I a, don't know. But I asked my friend at JetBlue. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Hey, by any chance that ten forty five out of, <laughs> out of Vegas is is he on that? Maybe they'll tell me. Maybe they won't. I don't know. So but. we'll get to that in a second. I know. People are probably wanting to hear more. But before that, you guys did your podcast today out of the Blue Wire Studios. We did. How was that? That was amazing. Uh, you know, me, Phil, and Reg are all from three different locations. You know, I'm from Denver, and uh, Philip Lindsay is from Chicago. Reg is uh, out of the Bay Area. Um, he's out towards me? Yeah. I didn't um, know that. Yeah, Reg, uh, he, he's originally from Bakersfield, but he lives currently in Oakland. And, oh, wow. Uh, so... Yeah, it's uh, and that's why like him and Hobbs are super close. Okay, they're, they're okay, yeah. Um, and so we've you know we've convened before, we've uh, met up before, but we had never done a show in person, the three of us together. I've done that's a show great. with Reg, and I've done a show with. Have I done a show with Phil? No, I hadn't done a show with Phil in person. And so, uh, but they had done a show together, so that was the connection. But the three of us hadn't connected yet, and so it was great to get to do it at. Uh, at Blue Wire, and uh, Andreas set that up, and I was a really happy shout out, uh, Andreas Hale. Um, thank you, and <laughs> uh, and shout out Cole as well for uh, for handling all of the technical side of things. It was great. Yeah, it's a, it's a great deal that they put together with with the win. Well, uh, can I ask you how did you put the, put together that podcast? Um, that was really kind of serendipitous. It was like you know I had been doing um, my old show, RBR, for about 16 years. And I had started kind of a side show called Wrestling with Weekends. And I was doing that for, uh, I think I only actually completed eight episodes of that show. But in that process, uh, I had done some of my best podcasts I had ever done. And one of the episodes I had done, it was the second episode, um, was with Phil Lindsay. And uh, I had... Some people up in pro wrestling listen to that show and, and give me some really and great they feedback, it. and they liked it. And uh, and so I was going to keep on this track of doing that show, Wrestling with Weekends, every Saturday morning. And then uh, I want to say it was, oh, duh, it was September 11th, 2021, and I remember that because we talked about the 20th anniversary of 9-11 right. on it, and I had Righteous Reg on the show. And we had another great episode. It, everything just went really smoothly. And at the end of the episode, you know, anytime you have a guest, I'm sure you guys will say it today, uh, you give the obligatory, hey, we got to do this again sometime. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I had said that to Reg. And then Reg uh, goes, yeah, maybe one day me, you, and Phil will do something. Light like, bulb. Light bulb and it was off. like that Monday I asked them, and then we connected with Sean maybe two days later. And... Uh, and that was it. Grab City was born. Basically, I transformed wrestling with weekends. I was like, you know what? 
let's do Grap City on the weekends. I'll drop wrestling with weekends. We'll stop that. Yeah. And that's where Grap City was born. And it's just taken off from there. So I don't know if you know this, Garrett. After Will came on the show with me, mm-hmm. we we I, I just we were just shooting the shit for like a good 30 minutes afterwards. And then we discovered that we kind of started off the same way in podcasting, like with the tech stuff and like our interests. Yeah. It was actually, I was like, wow, I've never spoken to anybody that had like the same strange path. Yeah. Like this. our connections with like tech TV yeah. and Leo Laporte and really all of that weird. stuff. Like yeah. I, I've, I've never, and it, it was like, it was actually great because going from technology, you know, going from like a comedy podcast, a tech podcast, to like wrestling, it's like all over the place. And then talking to Will, I was like, oh shit. I'm like, he had kind of the same entry into podcasting because at that point, that's all it was. Yeah. It was just all tech podcasts. Yeah. And, and so, yeah. I thought that you was were, really You cool. were like a teenager doing this stuff too, right? I was 17 when I did my first podcast. Uh, and that was like when podcasts weren't like, like a major thing. There were so few that were actually out there. Um, there were only two other wrestling podcasts, like what you could officially call a wrestling podcast. Eventually, everything got rebranded as a podcast, mm-hmm. but at the time, there were two official wrestling podcasts when I had kind of got Who was there. it? Do you remember? Um, I know Smart Wrestling Fan is one of them, and another one was called Revenge of the Wrestling Fans, I want to say, that maybe lasted they were like, like another year. Bitter. Yeah. On yeah. Podcast <laughs> Alley. You have to go to Podcast Alley yeah. and download it. Exactly. Yeah, it's Podcast cool Alley stuff. or Podcast.net. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. We've been beating, beating around the bush here. Let's just get into it. Uh, so Andrew and I were at dinner. We were at Texas Day Brazil with uh, all the Observer folks for for the for the dinner tonight. And uh, you know we're kind of getting we're kind of reading Sean's Twitter because Sean's on top of this story. And right as we leave, Sean tweets, "I can confirm a flight out of Las Vegas tonight has been booked for MJF." And this is after we had read. MJF no showed the fan fest at, for AEW, and so we we're like, "Oh wow, there's something going on here." And the, we started talking like, "Does this mean he's gonna no show the pay per view? Like, is he holding some leverage? Is he, you know, is he trying to get something out of this? Does it mean he's supposed to job? You know, that's yeah. all the things that you start thinking about when something like this happens. But then that tweet comes out, and we're like. Oh, this is maybe a little bit bigger of a deal than we sort of thought it was. Really yeah, big. I, I I can't. You know, in the beginning, I was like, "Well, this is a great work because he, you know, MJF is always in character, and you know, Tony said that the best comes out. He did an interview. I think he said something yeah. like, you know, you blend reality and you get the best out of it. Uh, that's the best of wrestling when reality's involved. But you don't start. I mean, for him to no show and then they had to give money back to people. Uh, that's a huge and then deal. You now. If, you know, I'm not saying that they called Sean and told Sean, right? But you don't ever want to work the journalists like that, especially when you have a guy like Sean that that's, you know. I, I will confirm that uh, that that's uh, not the case. Yeah, yeah I, not I, don't, the case I don't think whatsoever. that's the case. How, how soon before Disco Inferno tweeted, it's a work, everybody? Well, right? I mean, we could go down the block <laughs> and see him at Sapphire. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I'll say this. Uh, as of right now, um, the, you know, a lot is still up in the air. Uh, one of the things that I do know is that tonight is when uh, the roster is supposed to go over the matches and the finishes and all of that and the match order and things of that sort. So at the very least, there should be a lot of confirmation as to whether or not uh, he's going to be uh, – he's expected to be on the show. I mean, that's uh, – I – I would. I'm. I'm actually very surprised if if it comes to that point. I would be really surprised that it came to that point because I think MJF is. You know, you could kind of read that it's a character, but you don't really get a good sense of like his personal thoughts. And I think, you know, with Cody leaving, I think Tony's a little bit more conscious about this. I, I would be shocked if if it if he doesn't show up more than you know the rumors of him not showing up. Uh, I don't know. I I fall on the other side of it right now. You think I, you think he's gonna no show? I think so. I think that uh, I know this has been boiling for a while. Um, I know he is unhappy, um, and I it it, it I I don't want to put any accusations out there, so I won't say what I was thinking just then. But uh, I will say that it is just kind of very interesting timing. Yeah. That to to pull the angle to go all the way with this angle as far as it got 
um, to really the big blow off, the big payoff. And here we are now discussing whether or not he's even going to be able to pay off the whole thing. That's the part that I am the most surprised by. So, okay, just playing the other side here, playing the MJF side, we know Andrew's been telling us this, that there is another company who may be interested in him. We know because he keeps oh, telling. Oh, impact. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we know. It's MLW, dude. He's going back. <laughs> <laughs> we also know because he's been talking about when his contract comes up. So we know he's 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 the one broadcasting that, right? We wouldn't know. Well, I'm, some people would know, but the the public wouldn't know if it wasn't for him telling people that this is the thing. If this is his game, this is the perfect time. To play hardball, right? I mean, but you don't you don't hold up the promoter the night of you know. Okay, the, but you if know. you in, in a in a business that is fair, yeah, right, in a business that is not about oneself. So, and the reason I, I, I'm not saying that this is the right thing to do, but if we think about it from the perspective of he's probably one of the most underpaid guys in the company. He signed the contract, right? He got over for this moment to be a free agent, uh, but if he is like no, I, you know, I, I, I'm worth more than I, and then my current contract isn't here. Is what I want. This is the perfect time to play hardball from a leverage perspective. Yeah, he's not making any friends by doing this. He's making enemies by doing this, right? But if you are adamant to do that, the 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 night before you're having this big giant match that has been being promoted for so long, if you're playing hardball. That's when you do it. Oh, the, yeah. I, and, and here's the other thing. You know, Sasha and Naomi. Ju- that's, that's what I was about to say. The, I, I'm glad yeah, you brought yeah, it up because I wanted to bring I, it back because that's that. what Very I was similar. That was exactly what I was about to bring up was that uh, I don't know if it's the best timing right now with WWE essentially taking a very public stance against the idea of no showing on your fans and no showing um, a pro- promoted product. Right. Yeah. Like WWE has taken a very public stance on that. And they have very much thrown the performers under the bus on that. It, uh, so the idea right now that um, the leverage player for MJF in a situation where he would want to be signed by WWE um, to do essentially that, uh, I think, is crazy. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's completely crazy in a st- in a scenario right now. Now that's not to say would WWE pass up on MJF? Probably not. Um, I can tell you there's no way they would. Right. (laughs) And so there's zero, every indicator talking to them. Now, obviously, if he's asking for something ridiculous, they're going to say no. Okay, but but do do we know if Vince has seen his work? Um, Zero chance he hasn't. I don't don't know the answer to that. But I can tell you that majority of people on a higher level in that company, I mean, everybody knows who he is at this point, but the majority of people on a higher level of, uh, in that company realize that the Cody, what happened with Cody set a precedence and he's in that list of people that would, that they would love to have mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because the impact of him going there. And he's also, I mean, those promos on AEW that he would cut weekly t- to bury them. Uh, they would be so happy about it. Yeah, so I would say, I don't know what Vince knows or not. I, you really don't hear much about him. Yeah. You know, you hear about everybody else except him. Yeah. Well, uh, you usually hear that kind of stuff after the fact, though. Because, like, yeah. even when you go back to, like, the WCW days, right, where, like, Hunter has always talked about how um, when Vince courted him, Vince spoke directly to him about his work he had seen, right? And, like, Cody um, just recently talked about the fact that, um, you know, it's funny, the last show you and I had done together, we were speculating on, on what Cody, yeah. on what Cody was going to bring. You know, was he going to be um, dashing Cody Rhodes? Was he going to have <laughs> yeah, smoking yeah, yeah. mirrors? And, you know, the thing I had said was that I felt like he was going to come in with American Nightmare and, uh, Continue all, and all the music in, in tow. And the, one of the things that Cody talked about in that process, he mentioned how, you know, Vince said, that's what we're paying for. We're yep. paying for this act. We're not paying for... Uh, the one that didn't work. Yeah, the one, yeah. that, the work. one that did work. This yeah. one worked. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're paying for you. We want what you're doing in AEW. We want to bring it here. That's what we're paying for. And I feel like MJF would kind of be given the same kind of pitch of like, we're not trying to change your name. I mean, although 
they don't like guys with the same first names and you've now got a Max Dupree. But uh, <laughs> so that would be interesting. <laughs> I <laughs> mean, <laughs> I'm Wait, so, we're so sorry. I'm are, you using, <laughs> are you using the right inflection on Dupree? Isn't it like a different? Du- oh. du- Dupree? Du- Dupree? Du- I don't know. Dupree. Yeah, I don't know. Paul um, Fontaine is in the room and he's dying to do the impression right now. <laughs> he's doing it with his hands. <laughs> there we go. There you go. Yeah, I, so I don't know. I... I think that as far as MJF is concerned, like he's another one of those cases where they want the act. They want every single thing that has come with yeah. him being a part of AEW. Listen, and the reality is, you know, there is an argument as to it's not just MJF. This isn't the feelings that he has. It's not just him. You started this company. A lot of people signed up for, you know, whatever, whatever that base salary was uh, that they signed up for. And the company's been in business for three years. And they were a startup. They're still a startup, and but they're a startup that is signing people to multi-million dollar contracts that were on another roster when they were supposed to be different. I'm not saying that I agree with that mentality. I'm saying a lot of people feel that way. There's a balance for sure for both. You have to have a balance. But I, I think for a lot of the talent, they're going to they're gonna start feeling the same, especially when the contracts are ending. Where's my money? I've been here from the beginning. But I'm the, on TV The every difference week. is Max's contract is not ending yet. Max's right? contract is That's not the ending. difference in this whole situation. Time, yeah. At least 18 months. Where later. where it's, I've already given you way more value yeah. than the money that you've paid me. And it sounds like he's un, he doesn't really want to renegotiate his current deal to extend it. He does want to be a free agent. Listen, or this could be the greatest work of all time. This could beat Montreal. <laughs> I'm going to put that out there, all right? Montreal, Montreal was not real. <laughs> Montreal wasn't real. Hogan body slammed Andre, <laughs> and, and he didn't know that he was gonna he was gonna pin him. You know, the, you, War, there's like three warriors. <laughs> you know what's funny? I admitted on Grapsity today that it was a really long time before I realized that the Iraqi threat at WrestleMania Seven was a work. Oh, wow. I had <laughs> the bomb threat. At <laughs> like, I thought that was real uh, for the longest I mean, time. But why wouldn't you? Right? Why wouldn't you? <laughs> Okay, so I would have been Who jokes about things like so, that. No, I would have been I would have been fourteen at that time. Dave's writing for yourself. the national. Mm-hmm. He's writing for the, the the daily sports newspaper. And basically he writes because we didn't know on TV yet. It hadn't happened on TV where they changed the venue. But he writes that they changed the venue to the LA Sports Arena, and they're going to tell you that this is the reason. The real reason They've only sold 15,000 tickets or whatever it was, right? <laughs> and so even before the angle played out on TV, I, as a 14-year-old kid, knew all the things before. Yeah. It was kind of ridiculous, right? You're like, oh, my gosh, why, how do I know all this information that, you know, that's happening on TV? But, yeah, that, like, that back, that's back then, Dave, 1991, Dave. No, I, I throwing thought, uh-huh. 95 miles an hour. <laughs> I thought as a kid, legit, I was like, whoa, like Sergeant Slaughter really messed up here. Um, but That's also that, when Bob Costas pulled out. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. When he knew, when he saw that that was the angle, he's like, "I'm out." He didn't like it. Yeah, I mean, bad decision making there. I mean, great heat on on slaughter. Not 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 like bomb threat, you know, heat, but great heat <laughs> on him. But you took GI Joe, made him into a heel. Why? <laughs> you know, like he's an all American hero. Now he's coming out with Agnon and <laughs> Colonel Mustafa. You're telling me that Why? Colonel Mustafa is not the Iron Sheik? Wait, Sheep? wait. Now I I was aging myself. No, you're you're good. I'm going into you're the early nineties now. Yeah, yeah. You're going. Uh, okay, so um, Brian Carey or Whitney Houston? <laughs> Which one? So you actually you actually made up by knowing that he went back for the graduation because I think you lost some points with him when you didn't. I know. I, I didn't. I, you know what? I didn't know that he's a big Mariah Carey fan, but I totally forgot. <laughs> I gave I gave a very political answer. Yeah, where yeah. I was right in the middle for both of them. There's no in the middle. Oh, uh, okay. I say that, but I, I fully have to say that. Um, Whitney, you is, love Whitney. Too. Yeah, I love Whitney. I, I absolutely I love, I love Whitney. Whitney Are you kidding me? Like Whitney has such a range of hits, but Mariah's the goat. It's there's, you know there's no I, you're right. There. You're absolutely right. Okay, I take it back. So you you brought up the Sasha and Naomi situation, which is I, I wanted to bring that up too. So we were kind of on the same wavelength. But can we actually talk about that situation? Because I feel like I've been at least on the F4W and Wrestling Observer website, I've kind of been a little bit closer to the talent side on that story. Um, but I, I, you and I haven't talked about this, but I was wondering, you know, what do you think about that whole situation? 
Um, I mean, I, I absolutely see the talent side of it um, as far as the uh, creative aspect of it. And uh, I also, I don't know, I, I can never side with the corporation. I just can't. Um, it, you know, once Vince revealed himself as a higher power, that was <laughs> no, okay. um, no, but in general, I just, uh, like, I recognize that as a company, um, that's an extremely frustrating situation. And like, I, I don't even necessarily disagree with some of the consequences. I don't disagree with the suspension. What about um, that? Right. What about the hands but, spanking on SmackDown? Right, that that part to do? though is incredibly unprecedented, yes. right? That That's one of those things where, they um, rarely do that. Yeah, and, you know, I know a lot of people compare it to, to Austin, right? Uh, but I think one of the differences with Austin was that um, a lot of – every time I see people bring up Austin in the walkout from 2002, we forget that they literally used that to make money. A week later was the introduction of Ruthless Aggression. They literally used the walkout of Steve yeah. Austin to essentially push the rebrand of the company to say, okay, we've entered a new era. This is ruthless aggression. They are costing themselves money with Sasha and uh, Naomi. On the other hand, they took away all their merchandise. They like they are willingly not making money off of this uh, story or uh, not storyline. Um, not making money off of this situation the way that they did with Austin. And I don't think like that's to me is unprecedented. WWE is always in the mode of hey, how can we monetize this and. Yeah. For them to take this situation and go, okay, they are we're taking away all their merch because they are not going to make any money right now. Um, we are going to make sure they, uh, the public is fully aware of the situation. A match that, look, they have changed matches in the middle of Raw with no explanation. They very well could have just changed they this. Changed and, it, people yeah. would, and the most people would have done is gone, you know, the old Hans moment of, didn't there used to be a six-person match? Um, and uh, yeah. and then somebody would have You know, my, my issue with it is that, there's the the story that they didn't like the outcome of the match and that's what triggered this. It, it it's more than this. Oh yeah. It, it's never it's not one match because one match changes you know constantly. It, this it, is a, it's death by a it's thousand a, cuts and that exactly. was like nine hundred and ninety nine. And that was that was them. the catalyst to to trigger them to say you know what this um, we're unhappy we don't like this and we want to do something different and we want to push it. Now I I mean obviously that's going to be a lot of fill in. Uh, WWE side of the story is that this account came straight from Vince and John Laurinaitis and the producers. But what are the producers going to say? Yeah, we told them to check their attitudes and they got even more angry at us and we escalated the situation after Vince, you know, kind of calmed everybody down. No, they're not going to say that. So uh, I just hope that they work things out for themselves. You know, no, you never want to see someone lose money like that, especially to hyper talent. So I said like this that. on uh, Wrestling Observer Radio last Friday, uh, but I, I think it's relevant to bring up again because you know how you have a bad culture at your company when, when it comes to the talent is when you use situations like that to basically tell the other talent in the company, this is what's going to happen yeah. if you try this, yeah. right? So don't even dare. What that really means, though, is there are other people who pay, may be possibly wanting to do that because at companies that are happy with the talent or the employees, you don't have to scare people into doing their job. You, they just, they're just going to do their job. So that part tells me that they believe that there's other unhappy talent who, who may be, oh, there's a you, tremendous use, you know, amount, yeah. Oh, we got to make the example out of them so that nobody else tries to do this. they've had this problem for a long time. It's not just now. Think about how many people from the beginning of the pandemic to now not got released, but requested their release. Staff Ali. I, I mean, is he happy there now? I don't think so. I think he went back because he had to. He, he's under contract. They froze his contract. They froze his contract. And, <laughs> yeah. You know, he has a family, he has kids, he has a wife. He, he has to think about them too. But, you know, and he's not the only one. Uh, how many of them were asking for their release? Uh, we, we've heard this. So... It's an overall culture change there. Uh, I think there are some people that are going to love the, that culture of being very corporatized and being like, you know, you're a machine, you fit this role, you're an actor, you fit this role. That's how, and generationally, it's going to change into that. Yeah. I, I, these these problems of, you know, Sasha and Naomi being unhappy with creative, they're going to beat that out of their comp out of their company for, as a whole for talent. NXT is being trained totally differently, and they are being taught that they are actors. 
fulfilling a role that they are hired to fulfill, and that is the story of the character. Now, professional wrestling is very different than movies and TV, but that is how they are positioning this, where how dare you say no to something? It's your job. It's on paper. You're an actor. But that's not wrestling. Right. Now, wrestling is is such a different beast because of the fact that um, – you know, they're not just playing these these roles like kind of one time. Although, you know, maybe that's the the culture WWE is trying to foster. Um, and, uh, yeah, I I can. You're also not yeah. getting hit on the head and falling on your back constantly <laughs> if you're an actor. Well, too, that, you know, I think you're a little bit more pos- protective well, and, and of this, your character because your unless, body's unless you're Tom Cruise and you want to do all your own stuff. Yeah, unless you're well, I was gonna say in, in professional wrestling, you're not just the uh, actor; you're the stunt man as yeah. well, and you're uh, every little part of it. Um, but yeah, I, I can see the idea of them wanting essentially that mindset, um, because, you know, there's a lot of higher ups in WWE view that as a mark mentality, right? That you, you know, that, uh, what you care this much about what your character is doing, like, you know, look at Johnny Depp, right? Uh, I mean, first of all, that, that trial is the best TV. (laughs) <laughs> there's i mean the best what did you what, what, what did you tell me close. what did you tell me amber heard's nickname was amber turd <laughs> amber turd what, what, fantastic name but he he's the way he talks about losing that pirates of the caribbean character he he talks about like it, it, a terrible example but it's like how he lost his finger you know like that, like that's the comparison that's how it was part of him yeah and now it was stolen away from him and he can never be that person again. It's it's almost kind of reminiscent of that because Sasha Banks' identity is Sasha Banks. Yes. Yep. Uh, same thing with Naomi. And you become the person that you represent because you have to live that when you're out on the street. Yep. You have to live that up with the kids that come up to you. Oh, you yeah. C- when people are booking, like, interviews and stuff, The Tonight Show, all of that, they're not booking, you know, Mercedes, Mercedes Renato, yeah. right? They're booking Sasha Banks. Yeah. You know that you, it's somebody. Whereas that doesn't Mercedes happen. is a pretty dope name, though. It she is. could rebrand. I, I, I think she at can, some point she can make it work. It's same with Trinity. I think Trinity was yeah. a much better, yeah, yeah, and yeah. more marketable name than Naomi was. But um, I, you, you wouldn't see it that way, right? Like it's not like um, you know, anybody does uh, an interview with Sterling K. Brown. They're not booking Randall Pearson. They're yeah. booking. Um, it's all right. I'm a love this, this guy for yeah. bringing up <laughs> this is us. But like, they're not going to book Randall. I'm going to miss. I'm going right? to miss the Pearson so much. Yeah. By the way, I haven't seen the last episode. I haven't no, either. Okay. No, this, so. I, I, no, but I did. Yeah. I did yeah, yeah. call my wife when she was watching it, and she was crying. She was like, "I can't fucking talk to you right now. <laughs> I, I really can't. I'm in like the worst depressed state <laughs> I've been in in years. Please leave me alone. I have. I've had it on my DVR since it aired Tuesday, and we just. <laughs> Uh, my wife and I, my wife's actually in the room. Um, I, we started it Tuesday night and then all of a sudden, you know, I had to fly here Wednesday and I was like, okay, we will turn it off and get to it later. And we just haven't gotten to it. Brilliant yet. writing like, on oh that show God. though. Yeah. 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 So yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. I'm a big Beth Pearson fan. Beth is, I think Randall and Beth are just a phenomenal yeah, couple. If our okay, banter this- could even be remotely that witty, I would love it. <laughs> the, 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 this is this is a very another dated reference, but growing up, everybody wanted to be Cliff and Claire Huxtable. Now nobody wants to be nobody. Cliff and nobody Claire wants Huxtable. to be no, especially but when you watch some of those. Clips now back. it's now it's Randall and Beth. Uh, Randall and Beth are the just the ideal couple. Yeah, they're so great. Um, well, you know the thing that you said about it's you you have a hard time like standing by the corporation yeah. versus the talent. I le- you know I learned that from. Q-tip from a tribe called Quest. Q-tip said, "Industry rule number four thousand and eighty: record companies are shady." And he was talking about he was talking about the you know the the business of yeah. music, but it very much applies the to promoter something like shit. this, right? Yeah. Because yeah. like if you think about, we can even talk about real sports, like LeBron James. He probably makes forty five million from the Lakers, right? But his value to the NBA is way more than yeah. that, right? And so it's like the the product that these folks are when they try to make more. I I don't have and, a problem with argument, that because and, and the, the, there's a shelf life. And the NBA or WWE, whoever, their argument is you wouldn't have this ability if we didn't propel you or we didn't, you know, set you up for the success. I think with like MB, like LeBron is 
one of the most talented basketball players of all time. But still, to be said, you know, if he didn't have that NBA backing him with merchandise and everything, would they? Where? How much money would he make? It's not. It's not. That's how these companies all think. If if we weren't yeah. here, you wouldn't be here. Yeah. So. They're the platform. Tough crap. We're the platform. Mm -hmm. We take the bunch of that money. Listen, th there's obviously a better solution here for yeah. all of it, but I think for uh, I'm I'm just waiting for WWE to make a comment about AEW's pay, especially after the Tony Khan comment after yesterday, Khan comment. right? <laughs> oh yeah. my we god, we were just he I was could just, not resist. I, I was just saying, you know, at some point, like I like Tony's transparency in this because a lot of the things that WWE does that's similar is kind of dirty play behind the scenes but i did say at some point he's gonna eat shit for yeah. it but i kind of like the fact that he goes out in front of it and then look, the next day it you know something happens and I, that's why i was surprised i was like wondering is i wonder if wwe is gonna like make a snarky comment i told you the reason why they're not <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I didn't hear this reason. No, I told him no. off. Oh, yeah. fine. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> so, I'll tell you off the end. Okay. Uh, I, I, I think it's it's, man. You know, wrestling is fun again. Yeah. It, 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 it's you're talking about stuff that you we have not talked about in years. Well, a big piece of that is that um, when you think about the culture of pro wrestling in the '90s and how um, it was really a talent's market because at that point. You had to keep talent happy or they were going to jump ship. And for a long time, the there was definitely a culture of um, not necessarily caring about what talent wants because at that point, where are you going to go? Impact? Um, I'm sorry. I, that's, that's the second time I'm not going to impact. I'm impact. sorry. Oh, two, I love impact. TNA. Two <laughs> shots. TNA. TNA. Yeah. yeah. What are you going to do? <laughs> Work for Jeff Jarrett? Although, no, although I had a wrestler tell me that. Uh, many years ago, that um, that Vince had straight up told them, like, "What are you gonna go work for Dixie Carter?" <laughs> like, and that was it. Like, that was what that wrestler was actually told. Yeah. Um, this was like ten years ago, uh, but uh, and I, that quote has stuck with me ever since. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I I think about that right and how that's how people that's how the culture for and about twenty terrible. years was. It, it really is terrible because think about it. You 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 have worked let's say 15 years, you get to the top, right? You get to where you want to be, and then you get cut at the company. Yeah. There's nowhere else for you to work. Yeah. Right. It, it's like you have the worst specialty job ever. You become you become super successful, and they're like, hey, sorry, you're not working out for us. Are you too old? And then you go to this other place, and you're making pennies on the dollar compared to where you it, – it, it, it was terrible for years and years, and I think you know having another option there that could facilitate – some of these guys and, you know, re reinvent them more than anything else is going to change everything. And when you look at it now, yeah, we have the other options. And, and, and now that we have two major companies, we're seeing it on both sides. We're both sides are seeing talent that see the grass is greener on the other side. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so uh, we'll see how that plays out. Uh, but it is, I think it is very much a good thing for wrestlers to essentially have the ability to be able to say, you know what? I know it's a quote that nobody oh, likes no. to say anymore, but that's not going to work for me, brother. I had a vision. Oh. I had a vision. I don't know if you know this. I'm a little clairvoyant. Oh. Tell yeah. them my abilities. Hey, we so, were just talking about her from uh, the Cosby Show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, Andrew has a special talent. Very special talent. In a hotel, when you choose the button so that we can go up the uh, the elevator, there's like eight elevators he can figure out what's the one <laughs> that's, that's, that's going to light up. It's, it's, I, can't, I, I can't predict anything else except that. However, I have seen a vision. All right. All of a sudden, there's a vignette. Okay? It's a house. Really nice house in Georgia. Static. Camera gets closer. Static again. Zooms in. It's brandy. Oh, wow. Inside, and it cuts. All of a sudden, again, there's stuff missing in the house. It's Cody and Brandy inside of the house. Did you take the keys? Where's the dog? The dog's gone, right? Pharaoh's missing. This continues. Money in the bank. Cody climbs up. Lights go off. Lights come on. He's staring down. There's a man wearing a ski mask all in black. 
You're just going to redo dog. the DDP angle all over <laughs> again. It's MJF. That's his debut. He's the stalker. Oh, my God. I'm telling you, I put this in the goddamn universe. Where's Sarah the Undertaker? It's in the universe. Oh, Cody has another tattoo. Just as Brandy on his neck. Just add another terrible tattoo. But this is how it ends. This is how they do it. See, isn't that a fantastic way to do it? I mean, it worked I mean, for DDP, fair, didn't it? Uh, so, you know, the funny thing was... It didn't sound bad. <laughs> the, <laughs> the funny thing was, like, with DDP... Like, with MJF, that's almost like a believable angle. Because the problem with the DDP angle was that that was, like, so much not like anything we knew DDP to be in WCW, right? He was positively paged. We yeah. knew him as a very... Why are you man. stalking him, man? Yeah, we knew him as married to Kimberly last we checked. Yeah. And so... Uh, and the guy who never joined the NWO, like, that was DDP, right? And then they bring him in, and they're like, no, he's actually stalking The Undertaker's wife, and he's been doing so for months, and it makes <laughs> no sense whatsoever. I, so, like, I feel like MJF, you know, if the equivalent of that would be to bring him in. And what a play. heinous guy, right? <laughs> yeah. I, you know what? Make him the stalker. I'm all into it. <laughs> I, good good segue to uh, our next segment here. Uh, Double or nothing. You excited for the show? Uh... I was excited, and now I'm more interested than I've ever been. Oh, with that match especially, huh? Yeah, just in general, like all of a sudden, oh, what's going on? Uh, I want to get before we get out of here. We'll wrap it up soon, but I want to get both of your thoughts on one: what's the match that you most are looking forward to, and then two: what do you think the best match on the show will be? Ooh, okay. Uh, can I give a third? Yes. And then that's would be a sleeper match. Yes. Because um, sometimes it's not necessarily the best. Because uh, I think my sleeper is going to be um, Darby versus Kyle O'Reilly. I think that... Think any enough time? Uh, I think even if those guys only get like seven minutes, I think they would give it the best seven minutes they could. Yeah. Uh, I think... It would be a sprint. Yeah. I think they, they could absolutely do a crazy sprint. Or they get time. I don't know. Uh, but either way, I think that'll be a, a sleeper. Um, I think the... The match I'm most looking forward to is really the world title. And yeah. for me, it's just because of the fact that uh, out of, what, this is AEW's 13th pay-per-view, I want to say. Um, is it really? It's number 13? Yeah, I think this is Were you 13. at the first? No, I wasn't at the first. I was at the you second. You at the first. No. Uh, I, I went to All Out. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is pay-per-view number 13. Um, and in being pay-per-view number 13, one thing I've noticed is that the world title matches, while good, have for the most part been predictable. And this is the first time that I've looked out and seen that no one has a consensus. There isn't yeah. like a general, okay, CM Punk's winning, Hangman's winning. And with that, I feel like there's so much interest. There's yep. going to be so much buzz in the building uh, over at T-Mobile. I think a crowd's going to tell the story of that match. Yeah, I think so you know, too. I have a great ending to that match. Does that have anything to do with DDP? Camera shows. It's an apartment. AJ Lee just it's an apartment. <laughs> well, yeah. She was on it's Renee's AJ. show today. She was. She was on Renee's show. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I think this is the first time that I feel that I don't know who's going to win. And I think if either one wins, I'm happy, mm -hmm. you know, which is always a plus when you're watching something like this. But, you know, uh, now there's another story that is overshadowing a hangman page main event. Yeah, that poor right? guy. Right? And that, that poor guy. And... You know, we, we spoke about this, how, you know, the CM Punk stuff was kind of overshadowing it. Uh, the, the Brian Danielson stuff was overshadowing it. And now you have uh, another situation. Uh, they're going to have a fantastic match regardless. It's going to be a great pay-per-view. Uh, but that, that's the one that I'm really looking forward to. You think and, that's going to be and, the best and, match, uh, too? And Hookhausen. I want to see <laughs> Hookhausen. Uh, best match, honestly? That's tough because I, it's a card that looks like up and down could deliver. And, uh, like, I think that three-way tag is going to be really good. Uh, I feel like, you know, the, the three-way that they had on Dynamite just this past week was really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, they barely scratched the surface there. And I feel like uh, uh, that three-way tag could end up being a phenomenal match. Oh, the, uh, the for the title. Yeah, for the yeah. title. Yeah, I, th I think that could be I, – I think – not that I think. I know that's going to be a great match, but I'm curious who wins it. You know, you could incorporate Christian in there and you start that feud with Jungle Boy because they've been doing those facial reactions and everything. I actually think that uh, the tag champs – I would rather see that match without the tag champs. I'd want to see those other teams have a match. Uh, well, you know what's funny is – because I like the story behind this match because I feel like it's been – 
um, a lot more subtle than, uh, but I feel like it, there's been a lot more story there than people are giving. It's not credit just for. a match for a match for a title, right? Yeah. Because like the story there that I think uh, the story element that I think people are missing, and I feel like it's going to pay off after Double or Nothing, is the fact that um, both the triple threat that we had on Dynamite this past week and the three way at the pay per view, neither match were set up by Jurassic Express. Yeah, Christian. Yeah, Christian yep. put them in that and. Jungle Boy lost the first one, and I think they'll also lose the tag team titles, and it's one of those situations where Christian put them in a situation, and they both and, and in both times, they failed, yeah. and that's where he turns on them. Mm-hmm. He's like, I set you guys up to prove me right, and you proved me wrong once again. You disappointed me. Turns on them. Then we get the Jungle Boy-Christian feud that we've wanted. Uh, any predictions for Boston-Miami? Uh... <laughs> Miami. I know who I, I know who Miami. I Miami. want Miami. to win. I'm going, I'm going Miami. It's Jimmy Butler's year. Uh, not as a, okay. Jimmy Butler's year to win the Eastern Conference Finals. I think. Oh my God! It's Golden State's year. Um, it's Golden as, State's year, like every year. I like it. Yeah. I of course. <laughs> 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 Look, uh, I've always said that as a Nuggets fan, a diehard Nuggets fan, the team that eliminates the Nuggets from the playoffs, which obviously always happens because the Nuggets have not won a championship, um, that's the team I stick with. Going forward, because then I can say the loss wasn't in vain. Yeah. So therefore, uh, I am root. I've been rooting for Golden State pretty much ever since the Nuggets got eliminated, and that's the team that I'm going for. I did the same thing last year with the Suns. I did the thing the year before with the Lakers, which very much made me grimace, but uh, <laughs> I, I had to do it. So Golden State, I think, is going to ultimately win, but I think Jimmy Butler is going to win. Uh, uh, Eastern Conference. Yeah. Eastern Conference. All right. Last question. Better chance. Of MJF showing up at the pay per view, or MJF sitting f- in the in the first row in Miami for Miami Boston. <laughs> oh my God! You know what? I, that would I, be I the would, thing to go do. Yeah, right? that would. Be, what a great! What a great! <laughs> is that game on story. TNT? Because if so, that would be almost the weirdest. No, oh, yeah. is, it, is, it, is it ESPN or is it? It's, is it ABC? It's ESPN. Okay. Or or maybe maybe ABC. Maybe ABC. Okay. TNT had the Warriors series. Okay, that's right. Because Chuck was trying to go to Cancun like every game. He's like, can we just get this thing over He's with? He's the best. I love Chuck. He's so <laughs> great. He's so that that whole thread of Charles Barkley being one of the funniest men. Like, that <laughs> yeah, that's is, a great thread. That is a great thread. Um. All right. I think we're done here. We're done. This and was awesome. This was awesome. Thank you very much for uh, for doing this. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. It was awesome. Uh, so Andrew and I did a show with Brian and Dave that is already up on the website, both YouTube and the website. We'll get this thing up with Will. We're about to have a sweet party. Some of the people are already here. We actually had an audience. And it's that kinda, was nice. It's kind of weird, and I have so much more respect for people who perform in front of a live audience because every time I'd say something, Paul would, like, wave his hands and it would, like, distract me. And I'm like, okay, i got to think of what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm um, just looking at JJ to take fancy photos of me. Same the thing, right? Time. But it's the same thing. Yeah. Like, you know, Suncast is taking photos, and you're trying to, like, stay, in, you know, in concentration. But, um, no, we're, we're good here. Uh, so, for Will, for Andrew, we're going to get back to the party. I'm Double G. See you when we see you. Peace out.